Welcome to Second Opinion, the reviews show here on the Nexus. I am your host, Ian Arbuck, and today I am joined by Ryan Rampersad so he can ask me all about my experiences with the Google Wi-Fi. Find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash SO25. All right, Ryan. I am. I think this is the first time we've ever reviewed a router. A router? A router, yes. Is that those... like a modem? It gives you the Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi? The Wi-Fi, yes. Wow. <laughs> so, Google Wi-Fi. This is not the first wireless router that Google has made, but it's the first one that Google has made. Oh, that's a distinction. Yeah. Can you explain more? So, they had this program called OnHub back in the day, and by back in the day, I mean not that long ago. It was like two years ago. Well, in Google time, that's yeah. like a decade. <laughs> Things move fast, you know? Um, so, so they partnered up with, I think it was Asus and TP-Link uh, made the two models of, of OnHub. Um, so, you could think of like OnHub as kind of their Nexus program, right? Yes. Uh, and then... The Google Wi-Fi is their Pixel program um, because the Google Wi-Fi also came out with, you know, at the same time as like the Google Home and um, the Pixel, you know, is part of their like made by Google push. Mm-hmm. I think there was a hashtag in front of that officially. Of course. Hashtag made by Google. Um, so the difference between the Google Wi-Fi and the OnHubs is that the OnHubs were designed as just a singular uh, router. The Google Wi-Fi it also incorporates um, a mesh network mm-hmm. as a possibility. Um, you don't have to use it as a mesh network, obviously, but you can if you want to. Um, so the, the pricing on it is like, uh, I think it's like $129 for a single unit. Right. And then you can get like a three pack for $300, right? Yeah, I Something think so. Like that. Yep. And I got a single because oh. because my house is not that large, it's mm-hmm. seventeen hundred square feet, and it's built like a cube. So, okay. so as, it's yeah, good so enough. As long as middle. I put it in the middle, yeah. yeah, it's probably going to reach to all parts of of the house. Mm-hmm. Um, but I I wanted to get the Google Wi-Fi instead of an OnHub, in part because it's newer. So I'm fairly certain that Google's going to continue to work on it and support it, you know, and give it new features. Um, somewhat it's very brave. Somewhat less confident that they'll be doing that for the OnHub. Very brave. Um, but also because, like, I, I want to be assured that if I, you know, move to a larger house or mm-hmm. if I suddenly decide that I want to have, you know, Wi-Fi down the block or whatever. Right. Like, or in the garage. Or in the garage, yeah. yeah. That's more likely. Um, then I can just add another unit and, yeah. and have this mesh network. Um, so let's talk about that range. Because um, I think that's probably the most important part of a router. That I can think of another going... important part. Well, yeah. Yeah. I are you talking about speed? No. I'm talking about okay. That that's based on your internet. That's okay. different. Um, I'm thinking the user interface. Ah, yes, yeah. yes. Um, range first. So range first. It's got good range. It that's doesn't good. Have, it doesn't have amazing range. Um, I think I think the Netgear router that uh, my other housemate had, um, and actually the reason that we bought this one was because he moved out and mm-hmm. then took that one with him. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that one may have had a little bit better range, um, but it's kind of hard to say because we we moved as well. So right. I'm not in the same physical space testing it either. Mm-hmm. Um, but of course, you know, if if the range isn't quite enough, then uh, then you just mesh it up. Yeah, yeah. Um, it it reaches from the center of my house to all parts of the house. Mm-hmm. Um, you start to notice that you're losing signal when you get out to kind of like the far reaches of the deck in the backyard. We've got a pretty big deck. Um, and then once you get into the garage, then it's like okay, I'll be either at like half bars or lower, or it'll lose the signal. Okay. Yeah. So, like, how far away from the house is the garage? I am really bad at me too uh, estimating feet, but I'm gonna go with maybe thirty. Thirty feet, okay. Sure. So, like, the size of my backyard, roughly. Um, that's. I think your backyard is longer than mine. Okay, so yeah. I can get signal from my house to the to the garage, and mm-hmm. that's it's it's slow, but it works. Right. Um. And, yeah. And I think your your router is placed pretty close to the back wall of your house, it's, right? It's basically in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. Um my house is kind of a long house, okay. right? Um it when I first looked at it on Google 
uh, Ma- Google Maps, uh, you know, Street View or yeah. whatever. I was like, it looks like a Star Destroyer. It's kind of tall and long and menacing. <laughs> that is such yeah. amazing knowledge you have. <laughs> um, like you couldn't say it looks like a van or it looks like a car. No, 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 no it no. looks like a Star Destroyer. A Star Destroyer. Yep. Yep. <laughs> um, so I, I I named the Wi-Fi network that I put on this Google Wi-Fi uh, af- oh. after a particular Star Destroyer. Oh, good, yes. good, good. Yeah. Keeping in theme. Mm-hmm. Um, now, what's what's the other important thing about a router that you were going to well i would say the user interface so whatever the mechanism for changing settings setting it Mm -hmm. up you know whatever whatever that is i've had so many routers and modems that are just absolutely awful yeah so what i'm used to with like a router or modem is uh open up your browser go to 192.168.0.1 and log in as the admin that's right yep um and of course, you use the universal standard password. Of course. Oh my gosh. <laughs> if you didn't make the joke, I was. Um, so the, the, this is going to be a, a totally different experience than, uh, than what you're used to. Um, for one thing, it's, it's kind of, it's, it's a great user interface and it, it m- makes a lot of settings accessible to people who normally wouldn't be able to figure out heads or tails, you know, in, in the, uh, the modem settings, mm-hmm. the router settings. Um, on the other hand, this is also its biggest con. Mm. Uh, and I'll just get this out of the way right now. This is a router that was designed for a mobile first world. Mm-hmm. Uh, the app, which is only available on Android and iOS, is the only way to change settings on this thing and control it. Yeah, that would hurt. That, yeah. I hate that about this thing. Because I really, I really just want to be at, hmm. you know, I'm sitting at my desk. I'm on my desktop or I'm on my laptop, whichever one, you know, right. I need to be able to like interface with this thing. Mm-hmm. Um, especially since there's so many things to do with it that I never have thought of doing with a router before. So when you go to, you know, 192 dot blah, blah, blah. That's a really good question. What does it do? Do you want me to check right now? How would you do that? By remoting into my desktop at home. Oh my gosh. You're so sad. So if I'm on the desktop at home and I go to 192.168.01, it actually gets all the way to the CenturyLink modem, which of course is, you know, where the, the des- desktop is Wi-Fi into the Google That's Wi-Fi, really weird. And the Google Wi-Fi is Etherneted into the modem. It's just passing right on through. Yeah, that's not what I expected. Yeah, um, that would be a really inconvenient feature, I think, for me. Yeah. But I can totally see how, for a normal person... That's totally convenient mm-hmm. and fine. Mm-hmm. Um, funny story about that. I mean, th- this is like my old man thing is that like, oh, no, 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 no. we're just making apps now. And we're not making stuff for the desktops anymore, but desktops are important to me. So I'm angry. Uh, I, I, desktops aside, at least real browsers. But right. I will mention that when my dad um, moved to his house, mm-hmm. uh, you know, uh, like it was like the third day there, he didn't have his computer or anything set up. We set up his Centrelink modem on our phone. And, you know, this was mm. back in, huh. like, 2010, you know, back when we had barely a good Android. Like, that was Froyo of time. How did you interface it with that modem? We just went to the web interface. We have a browser. But how did you connect to the Wi-Fi on it? It was unsecured at the time. Oh, wow. Mm, no. <laughs> so... You know, it's not unheard of that you'd use a phone for settings like that. It, right. it totally makes sense, but man, would it be inconvenient not to have a desktop interface? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, even with uh, with like laptops these days, you know, you think of like, okay, I'm going to Ethernet into my modem right. to change the settings. Most mm. laptops don't come with an Ethernet port anymore. No, they don't. And not like most people don't get an Ethernet adapter for their laptop. No, that doesn't have one. So, yeah, so I can see where they're coming from, especially from, like, the setup perspective here. Yeah. Um, it was very, very easy to set up. I just, you know, I, I plugged in the um, the device. By the way, it powers over USB Type-C. Aww. So I could totally go into the middle of the woods with my external battery, plug it into this uh, thing. And, and get, a, ha- get a Wi-Fi router and it, for no reason? Yeah, get a, get a network that's not connected to the Internet. Hey, oh, well. great. <laughs> it's good for land, land, land party, party land in the party in the, the woods. woods. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, oh but yeah so so i plugged it in um i installed the app on my android phone mm-hmm. um 
and it prompted me to like take a picture uh well not take a picture but scan the barcode that's on the bottom you know Mm -hmm. um the qr code and then it just brought me through step by step like okay now we're going to create a password for or we're going to name the network we're going to create a password for it we're going you know um it uh you know the it's it's now tied to my google account Mm -hmm. right so i can like take a look at what the settings are on the router even though I'm not at home, you know, since I have internet access, I can, I can do that. I can, uh, take a look at what, like which devices on the network are using up a lot of bandwidth and Mm -hmm. stuff like that, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So does it have good like traffic graphs and yeah, yeah. It, it, it it can either do like real time kind of thing where, you know, it's got like a, um, a line graph yeah. that goes up and down and it's kind of shaded underneath. That shows like know? the bandwidth usage and stuff. Yep. Yep. That's nice. Um, and it can also like show you, uh, if, if you go like, uh, on a time period that's like more than just right now, the mm-hmm. last five seconds, um, it'll show you like over the last, you know, week you've used cool. however many gigabytes down and however many gigabytes up. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I really like that kind of feature and I wish more routers slash modems had that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now let's roll back to setup for a m- brief moment. Setup is also one of its uh, big flaws because I was reading on a forum that you have to have an internet connection in order order to do the setup on this thing. Eh, I get it. Which is, I mean, it's like, but what if I just want a network? That's not a thing that, you you know, it's it's, it's a a normal home usage case. It's an anti-Google thing, really. Anti-Google thing? Yeah, they're all about the internet, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, So it's, yeah... Aside from those two weird things, the fact that the mobile app is the only way to interface with it, and the fact that you do need an internet connection in order to set up this this uh, um, device, uh, everything else is is pretty fantastic. Um, so it's intended as just a Wi-Fi router, right? Um, so unlike most other Wi-Fi routers, it doesn't come with like an array of you know four Ethernet ports on the back. It just has one Ethernet port for plugging into the modem, mm-hmm. and then it's got another one for either, uh, you know, just a single device, or maybe you pass that off to a switch, or right. or you can mesh uh, another one, another one directly, oh. yeah, over Ethernet. Um, they can also mesh over Wireless. just wirelessly. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So what, um, like, how big is it? It is, oh, I'd say like five inches diameter, maybe, um, okay. and. Uh, like two to three inches tall. It's pretty small. Um, yep, pretty small. It's uh, it's nice and it's it's a white sphere, not sphere. Whoa, it's a white cylinder. Um, let me get my three wow. D geometric shapes. Hold right. on while I look up the Nexus Q. <laughs> um, it it looks really really good. Like um, it's got this this single kind of slit uh along the front for the um for the LED that mm-hmm. that you know indicates to you. Um, whether you have an internet connection right. and stuff like that, you know, it like, it'll, uh, glow red if, if it is not connected to the internet, you know, mm-hmm. stuff like that. Um, so it delighted me the first time that I <laughs> opened it up, by the way, you can watch the unboxing video. Oh yeah. Got to put a link to that in the show notes. I, yes, I definitely will. Yeah. So does it, does it have any physical antennas? No, not, not outside of its body. Wow. Nope. Um, so there, there's nothing that I can do. To go like, oh, maybe if I arrange them differently, it'll right. be, you know, but there's also like, I don't have to worry about that. Right. You know? and, and if you did worry, you just get another one mesh it. Right. Yep. Right. Yep. So I, I really like when the routers have as many antennas as humanly possible. Yeah. My router has six. Yeah. 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 I don't know if that matters. I, um, I mean, I trust Google to arrange the, uh, the, the antennas in a way that makes sense in the inside. Right. Um, also. It looks freaking good without antennas, man. Like yeah. we, we have this thing set up uh, right next to our television, mm-hmm. um, and it goes really well with the minimalist, like black wood right. um, uh, TV stand that we have, mm-hmm. um, which is convenient because the TV also happens to be roughly at the center of the house. Oh, so that is convenient. Though. That is exactly where we want the router to be. Right, and it's right next to the, you know, TV thing that plays YouTube. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What is that called again? Computer. No computer. I was thinking the Nexus player. Oh yeah, no. So uh, the Nexus player doesn't have an Ethernet oh, port right, on right, it, so course. that one's uh, Wi-Fi in. Anyway. So sad. But we do, yeah, we do get to have the um, the computer that's plugged into the uh, TV is Etherneted in. Yeah, um, which is nice because, like in in our previous house, we had the wireless router a little farther away, mm-hmm. so the 
TV computer was etherneted into the modem, which means it was on a different Ooh. network than everything else. Yeah, it was awful. And yeah, so so this way I can actually like monitor its usage. I can set it as a priority device if we're streaming from that. You know, if we're streaming up, you know, to our to our YouTube channel. Um, for the yeah, and I can like specify time periods. You know, so like two hours because we're going to be doing it for two hours or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's really nice. Um, and also like windows can actually interact with other windows machines yeah, on the yeah. network turns you know? out that's important yeah um oh yeah one of the things that you can uh do on this is set up a guest network that's cool um which is uh i mean it's it's not like a killer feature or anything like that um but one really nifty thing that they did with this is um so ryan tell me why you why would you want to set up a guest network uh, what if you had a bunch of weirdos coming over to your house to do a podcast and yeah. you didn't want them on your main network? Yeah, why wouldn't you want them on your main, main network? Well, exactly. you know, if you had a uh, catalog of a lot of podcast files on a drive somewhere ah, yeah. that's shared on the network, you mm-hmm. know, you might not want them to uh, delete them all. There you go, yeah. So so the guest network, um, yeah, protects you from that. But the Google Wi-Fi, uh, when they made this, they were aware of the fact that a lot of houses now have these wonderful things called like Google Cast devices. Oh, so the Chrome those Cast, things? Yeah. Um, and those, you might want to make those available to your guests. Hmm. So they allow you to choose from all of the devices that are on your home network. Which your main you can network. access? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it, like it defaults to suggesting like, hey, I see these Chromecast devices. I see like the Google Home, you know, whatever. Um, it'll, it'll like check those boxes automatically. Um, and make those visible on the guest network, but you can you can choose as many devices That's from really your home cool. network as you want to. Yeah. So does um, so my router will show me like the host name of each device. So mm-hmm. like, you know, if I have a phone, it'll just say Android blah 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 blah. Right. Blah. Yeah. What what does this device do? So if it's a if it's a Windows device, um, it it pulls whatever name you gave it, uh, you know, for for showing on the network. Yeah. Um. For iOS devices, it works pretty well. Um, you can see the names of those ones. Um, for Google Cast devices, those all use like that whatever name you gave it. You know, so like we've got the kitchen speakers That's for our really Chromecast nice. audio, the go- the living room home, you know, etc. Mm-hmm. Um, Android devices, not super great. Mm. I see like two different um, LG Android devices when I have my Nexus 5X and my brother has his Nexus 5X at home. Um, so I have, but but but. It does let you rename devices oh. in like just for the purposes of seeing them in the Google Wi-Fi app. It probably so, maps them to like Mac address or something. Something like that, yeah. Yeah. Um so what I did was I I, you know, like started a download or whatever on my phone, took a look at which LG device was actually downloading something at that particular moment, named it after myself. That's and, good. And then I named my brothers. I like it. Yeah. That's a nice feature to have. I wish Android would let me chip set the name of the phone though Mm -hmm. it's also funny because like on on windows devices especially it'll show you like the name of the computer but then it'll also also show you like the brand of the radio that it's using (laughs) oh that's weird yeah (laughs) so so i can tell like who has a belkin you know crappy little usb one whereas other people have like a tp link you know (laughs) actually that's interesting (laughs) yeah um the uh, the app has a bunch of other like features in there as well. Um, obviously, we were we were just going over like how you can see all the devices on there. Um, um, it lets you like set a priority device. I mentioned that, um, but it'll also like let you check the network itself. Um, mm. So there's two different things you can do. It can uh, do a speed test um, to the rest of the internet, and, or you can do a signal strength test that's cool um so you walk over to whatever area you want to uh to see how strong the signal is and then you test it Hmm. um i don't know how useful that is because i can easily just like look at how like you know how many bars i have on the wi-fi indicator maybe but you know you you maybe want to more like is there enough bandwidth to do this thing Mm. kind of thing Mm -hmm. um I wonder if there would be a way for it to do that when like i wonder what it maybe it's more interesting when there's multiple so maybe uh oh maybe, the, may, when you have a mesh network set yeah, up maybe okay, yeah maybe your maybe your test can reveal like optimal placement for two right instead of just one yeah it'll probably tell you like which one of the base stations it's like connected to kind of thing right yeah um mm. so there there uh, I've I've looked into some more like prosumer um Wi-Fi solutions mm-hmm. um from Ubiquity and um one of them has so it's it's really similar to this mesh networking stuff 
Um, but it's really just separate ra- APs connected together, basically, and they all operate independently, but simultaneously on the same network. Okay. Um, and if you upload like a SketchUp, I think that's what it's called. You know, like the right Google SketchUp. Yeah. The, so the 3D the, modeling. Right. Yeah. So if you upload to it a map of your environment, <gasps> it will map the signal stuff to that map. Dang. <laughs> and it's really cool. Um, one of my one of the things I wish is that I didn't have to upload the map and the Wi-Fi just made the map for me. Well, that's insane. <laughs> It'd be really, well, cool, be really cool, though. Or you get a Project Tango phone oh, and you sure, just walk yeah. around in your house and it makes a map for you. Oh, even better. Boom. Man, Pixel 2, coming soon. That would be sweet. Not happening. Um, speaking of uh, Google, though, uh, you can add multiple different Google accounts as administrators for this thing. That's cool. So that's nice. So you yep. don't have to have, like one password for the device you can have it authenticate through google yeah yeah actually you you don't make like an admin password for the device at all it just is tied to whichever google account you were logged into what when if, you set it up what and if, then you can um, add more people what if you didn't have any internet and you wanted to log in sucks <laughs> yeah um that's actually a good question like if i unplug the google wi-fi from the modem if my phone is still connected to the google wi-fi will it let me change settings and stuff no. I'm not sure. I doubt it. I, you know, I'll have to go test that. That's, yeah. that's an interesting question. Um, granted, that's a really weird scenario. Yeah, I don't know uh, why that would ever scenario, happen. But yeah. Um, there are lots of advanced settings in the app that I didn't really dig into, like... Um, QoS. Yeah, there's... Uh, I mean, you can, you can take a look at everybody's Mac addresses mm-hmm. and... Um, there's a, there's a toggle for, like, turning on IPv6 if you want to. You should. And, um uh what else was there let's see uh oh dns settings mm-hmm. wan settings yeah do you use the google dns servers port forwarding um it says it says automatic under dns i wonder if it so. uses the google dns servers information this sets your wi-fi points to use google dns hey Indeed. do that there you go <laughs> yep and, we'll and, leave and that there. everybody as everybody knows google dns is 8.8 0.8.8. Ah, yeah, that's nice. Yep. Um, all right, I'm going to turn on IPv6, and we'll see if my housemates start texting me <laughs> that they lost the internet. They shouldn't. That is a good question. So, when you've changed settings on the on the device, did your device have to basically restart itself? I don't know. It says uh, let's uh, the settings have been updated. Yeah, it doesn't look like it had to restart itself. So, a lot of my routers, when you change the most innocent of settings. Like, you get this, like, loading screen, mm-hmm. and basically you're locked out from doing anything for, like, 25 seconds. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, the final thing that I would like to mention is uh, one thing that devices have to restart themselves for is when they get updates, right? Mm. Um, with most modems, it's kind of, a, like, a mystery about whether it's getting updates or not, you know? Oh, it's, it's, it's... not really a mystery because the answer is no. Yeah, the answer is no. Um, with the Google Wi-Fi, it is getting updates, and I can tell you exactly when it's getting updates uh, and what those updates contain because Google actually has, like, comprehensive release notes for no, it all It doesn't just say bug fixes? Uh, it does occasionally, but, it's, <laughs> but it'll give you, like, features uh, notes and stuff in there. Yeah. Um, so if I go in here and take a look at the is it under advanced settings, sometimes it is rather difficult to navigate the uh, app and find exactly what you're looking for. I mean, you know, it's it's uh, it's Wi-Fi stuff. It can't be easy. Ah, uh, here we go. All oh, right, I have to go into a specific Wi-Fi point. Oh, you know, so to specifically talk sense. about release notes. Here we go. So the latest release, which was version ninety four sixty dot forty dot five wow here's what's new i p v six enable i p v six on your google wi fi cool there you go wi fi pause will alert you if you're about to pause your own device <laughs> <laughs> that's good very smart of them <laughs> network check you can now see more detailed mesh results cool and then everybody's favorite general stability and performance hey <laughs> there you go bug fixes <laughs> yep um oh yes uh i just saw in the previous release notes they mentioned something about uh family wi-fi which is a uh setting that i do not use a a feature that i do not use because i do not have small children um and i do not care what my uh for the most part i do not care what my housemates do on with their internet access right um but the the family is a feature where you can like you know pause certain devices on the network at certain times of day you can set up like automatic rules Mm. um or you can like manually you know pause things right Um, 
So, so that's a, you know, a nice useful thing for like parents and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I have not touched it. It's pretty cool. Yep. Um, but yeah, this is, uh, I, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, it's going to be a, a router that I'm sure I have for many, many years to come. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I really wish that I could interact with it via my desktop somehow, you know, even if, like, like what happened to the Google that I used to know? Where, like, their main interface was, okay, you're going to be using a browser on your desktop. And then... And that then, Google... Oh, man. Died with Google Reader. They, d- <laughs> they don't even make a desktop version, a web version, of their latest messaging apps. Oh, that's actually coming soon, but... Oh, really? They're yeah. bringing Allo to... So it'll be actually accessible on multiple different devices. It won't log you out of one device when you log into another device. Yeah. Well, okay. Let's not go off on that rant again. Uh, you can listen to our review of Google Allo and Duo yeah. from way back when. That's in the show. Oh, notes. man. We might need to re-record that if we uh, actually get some updates. Oh, yeah. 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 So thanks for listening, everybody. This has been a review on Second Opinion, the reviews show here on the Nexus. Uh, you can find the Nexus on Twitter at the Nexus TV, or send us an email at the Nexus TV at gmail.com. Um, in particular, if you have any like feedback for this uh, for this episode, or if you want to suggest a product or something for us to review, um, or if you have something that uh, that you want to review for us, you can uh, you can hit us up, and you know we we don't have very many guests on here, so we would love to have you. Um, I have been Ian Arbuck. You can find me on Twitter as Ian Arbuck. And of course, you can find me, Ryan Rampersad, just about everywhere, but especially on the Twitter at Ryan Mar, and of course, on my website, ryanrampersad.com. Have a good one, everybody. <laughs>